you know, Mauritania, like anywhere, has a lot of problems and a lot of uh, uh, negative points, if you like, in the society. But one mm. amazing thing there is the kind of base level of knowledge, the knowledge that everyone has. Yeah. So there's so many examples. I remember once in Mauritania, I went on a, a kind of road trip with a few friends mm. and we drove all the way the, across the country, which is a, a, a huge distance. If you look on the map, we drove from almost, uh, from almost the west to the east of the country. So from the sea, from close to the sea, all the way across till just at the border of Mali. And, uh, you know, that region is is not that well-travelled, if you like. So there's a lot of um, mm. army checkpoints and things like that. And especially uh, because I was driving, um, they were, let's just say, slightly shot, to say the least, <laughs> to find the... Uh, a European not your man. average driver in the middle of Mauritania. Yeah, they, they, the, 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 the whole image of the car didn't make sense to them because it was a European man driving with uh, three, three or four Mauritanian passengers, and um, it's just very hard to explain. Very hard to explain. <laughs> but I remember it was, in, it was honestly like like one of those life life-changing experiences. Um, I could talk for a long time about that. It was only a few days. But, you know, like, like for example, meeting true nomads, like actual nomadic people in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the desert. And they were some of the most generous people, even the Mauritanians I was with, were like astonished at their generosity because these people had very very little you know what i mean and we we yeah. we've been traveling for a couple of days and we're trying to reach a village that was very 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 difficult to reach like you had to drive through mountains and it's very hard even to find a way there and one day we literally ran out of time because, like, it was getting dark. And alhamdulillah, we happened to come up, like, to put this into context, we hadn't seen a human being for hours. That's how mm. uh, rural this area was, mountainous. And we happened to come across these uh, nomads who, you know, their, their life is a travel through the desert with their animals and um, we basically spent the night with them you know they they, they have tents and things like that and um, I remember they were they were black Mauritanians so you get different uh, ethnicities in Mauritania and these people were like black Mauritanians um, the, and and um, but you know they, they speak Arabic so you get different different ethnicities but these are black Mauritanians who speak Arabic and um, you know we were talking to the the father of the family and then he we just saw him kind of like almost like ge gesture to someone um, and this other person walked off and we chat him for about 10-15 minutes and then we realised that he told he'd kind of covertly told this person to go and slaughter a goat or, or a, I think it would have been a goat and cook it for us. Mashallah. And then the next thing we knew, Mashallah. his wife brought out this huge platter of dates. And like at this point, I hadn't seen dates for six months. You know what I mean? So it was just Mashallah. an amazing experience. Um, but like the base, yeah. the base level people's knowledge that So like, you'd get stopped at an, a checkpoint and the soldier or the police officer would be asking you about different ayahs or, or things like this. And like, for example, mm. if you want to attain an ijazah in the Quran, um, it's not good enough 
to know the Quran off by heart because everyone knows the Quran off by heart. So, mm. like the person who told you he only knew three Quran, that's one of the things. Like for example, you have to learn at least uh, two riwayat. So you have to learn at least Wash and the Qalun. Um, Mm. And then you, one of the amazing things that is to attain an ijaza in Mauritania, you have to learn how to write the Quran by hand. You have to learn how mm. to write the Quran by hand. So you memorize the Quran of by heart, you learn two riyads, and then you learn another text which teaches you how to write the Quran from memory. And then the teacher will test you. So the teacher will say, write this page or write this surah. And you know, that might sound like something straightforward, but there are lots of parts in the Quran where the word is, is not quite written how it's pronounced. So for example, the word hadha, hadha. It's just written ha, val, alif. But you pronounce it as if there's two alifs. You don't say hadha, you say mm. hadha. Or for example, anywhere in the mushaf where you see a small letter, like a small wow, or a small alif, or a small ya, yeah, that letter has been uh, added in by later generations to show the reader how to pronounce it. So if you look at the original mushaf, a lot of the symbols and letters that are added in today to aid of pronunciation were not there. So what the scholars decided mm -hmm. is that, of course, they didn't want to take, you know, we can't change any letter of the Qur'an. We have to preserve yeah. the original Qur'an as it was written. So they decided to write these small letters, like, for example, in the name of uh, the Prophet Dawood, alayhi salam, you see that there's a dal, wow, and then a small wow, and then a dal, to show you Dawood. But originally that small wow mm. wasn't there. Um, yeah. So yeah, Mauritania is an incredible place. Um, 